these old mountains, they hold a lot of secrets over time. And unfortunately, so does a lot of its people. Now we'll be talking about mountain witches. Now this is a subject that people think, oh, Donnie, you don't you don't know what you're talking about. There is no such thing. Oh, our elders could tell you so much different. And some of them are still around today to share their stories, what they believe, and what really happened to them. So we'll look at this old this old legend and thing that still goes on in these mountains. So let's get started. Now everybody's heard of witches. They're just fantasy tales, fairy tales, folklore, and stuff to scare, to scare the kids. I've heard them all my life growing up. My grandmother used to tell me about them all the time, these witches, flying, moving around, trying to find little kids. And she'd scare us to death with visions of a witch looking like this, going around snatching up little kids and eating them. But that was just just for the children. But on a serious note, fact is stranger than fiction in these old mountains. Now best I can figure some research, this is not my specialty. I'm not much on this subject, but I thought I would share this with you. Best I could come up with the different kinds of witches in these old mountains over the years that our elders have told us about is one, of course, the evil witches. These are ones that aligned herself with evil, the devil, and all the dark arts. And these are the ones that cause mischief in these mountains for so much misery for so many people. And the next up is the witch doctor. The witch doctor is the people that would counteract the evil spells and hexes put on people and farms and animals by the evil witches. They were the good witches. And then there was the medicine witches, which cured all the elements and took care of all the sicknesses through the natural herbs of the mountains. They knowed all the roots and plants to cure people. And that's what they done, more like a medicine woman. And the fourth one is water witches. This is a common one. It still goes on today. I know I can do this myself. This don't work for many people. This is where you find water and things under the ground. So, let's get started. Now, a lot of people think, well, there ain't nobody believes in that crap. Well, yes, they do. The elders did, and they still do to this day. Look at these barns. Now, when I growed up, these barns were just barns. I never seen none of these hex symbols put on barns. It's more of a trend nowadays than it did anything, just decorative. But it wasn't back then, especially in Pennsylvania and the northern Appalachians. They put these on barns to protect from evil spirits and hexes from mountain witches. You can see here, they're still going on today. But like I said, it's more of a trend now and just decorative. We'll start out with some history. There's a lot of history on these old, these witches. Now, way back in Europe, they had a lot of witch problems. They accused a lot of innocent people, I'd say, of witchery, and they executed them. They burned them at the stake or hung them. And they, a lot of them escaped over to this country, and a lot of people that come into this country especially German, Dutch. They brought a lot of their traditions with them. And unfortunately, I would say some witch traditions too. And a lot of people been executed in the East for witchery. And a lot of people have suffered for some medicine, some not. And back in these old mountains, they migrated with the settlers. An old history here in Tennessee, everybody's heard of the Bell Witch. Right here's some a story on it. Everybody knows it. If you don't, it's not hard to find. Even done a lot of research in it. 
They can't figure that one out. A lot of newspaper articles on it too. From way back. Even uh, even one of our experts, Andrew Jackson, had problems with this. History on that. Now these old mountains, these people live so hard. Some of the remote, ruggedest places you'd ever see. And they tried their best to scratch a living off the land. And some people were good, and some were not. Now a lot of these old people, especially the old women, they, they could tell you tales about these witches. These are all kinds of stories that they've told, that hexes is put on them and their, their livestock and their family, and all kinds of history about this stuff. I'm just going to touch briefly on the different witches. And most of these people in these mountains were real religious. They attended church regularly. They believed in God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they read the Bible all the time. And the Bible says of all this evil in the world, and they believed it. They believed in evil curses, and they believed in hexes. That's just part of just like superstition in these mountains. Now first up we talk about is the evil witches. These are the ones that put hexes on people and their farms, their livestock, their family, people. They were they were just up to mischief, no good. A lot of people have said reports that when they milked the cows and the cow would go dry, not superstition. But their cows would instead of giving milk, they would give blood. And they would claim the witches had put a hex on them. So they didn't know who it was. You never know who, who was doing this against the family or the farms or the people. They never did know. Somebody had a, a revenge against the family or just a family feud. You never did know. They couldn't really know who it was, so they couldn't just accuse people. If they did, they'd be their own mountain justice here. They didn't need nothing else. They'd take care of it yourself. That's the way it was in these old mountains. So they never did know who it was. So they would get a witch doctor, somebody that would counteract these spells that the evil witch was putting on these farms or these people. And whatever that bad witch, evil witch hex they put on them, the witch doctor would counteract it. So whatever happened that they had made a curse or a hex on, it would reverse it. It would happen to the person that caused it. And I've heard all kinds of stories about this. Now these old people in these lands, they worked hard. And they had a lot of sickness in here too. Remember, now we're gonna talk about medicine witches. These people didn't have no doctors, no medicine. They lived off the land and the cures that the land provided. Now what we be talking about is what they called granny witches, medicine women, herb people. These people sobbed and fixed cures off of herbs, roots off the land, especially the old native American people. They really know these herbs and roots and plants to cure people. And a lot of these babies, they got sick they couldn't help them, but a lot of them, they cured them too with these roots and medicines. That's the way it was in these mountains. Now, it's said that these medicine women and these old granny doctors, they could cure a nosebleed with a verse out of the Bible. And here's the verse. And when I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted in thy own blood. I said unto thou, waste in thy own blood live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou hast waste in thy own blood live. That's the Bible verse, and it was stopped bleeding. Now we get into these mountains again, we get into water witches. This is the last of it. I know the known witches. This is a common thing. They just called them that because it was mysterious how they could find water. Now some people could do this and it'll work for a lot of people that don't even know what to work for. 
but some people it don't work. Here they use willow sticks, different types of wood, and it didn't matter what sex you was, if you was able to do it, you could do it. It was a mental thing. This is one they still cannot comprehend how it works. It's a mental thing. There's a force in nature that this works, but it don't work for everyone. Now here, this is me. This is what I use. It does work for me. I didn't believe it either. For years and years ago, somebody showed it to me, and I found my busted water lines and stuff. It's just simple coat hangers I use with no handles. And when you come across what your mind is set on looking for, it will cross, and there it be. And I'm absolutely positive that it works because I've used it. And you can make your own, just an old regular metal coat hanger. You cut it here. I just showed this for an example. And here's what I've been using. This is how I cut them and bend them, put them in my hands. This is a force in nature that man cannot understand. But it does work. I factually know it works. You can even buy these online. I was surprised to see these when I was doing some research. You can buy them. But why buy them when you can make them? Now these old mountains and these old people, they are real religious, but they're superstitious. And they've seen things happen in these mountains that we could, oh, we, we couldn't even comprehend the stories that they could tell us. These mountains are so beautiful, but they're so mysterious, and they're still forces in nature that man will never understand. Most of these old stories are just wise tales and folklore, but there's a lot of truth in them too. So whatever you hear as a folklore or a little legend, there's some truth behind it or it wouldn't be there. Now these mountains are so mysterious, but they're so beautiful. But there's things that man does not know. He thinks he knows, but he don't know nothing. That's just the way it is in nature. Now I hope you've enjoyed this. I just touched briefly on some of these mountain witches. If you really, really get interested in this, I'll leave a link in the description under the video uh, where you could really listen to some of these old people that's been interviewed on what they think about mountain witches. So, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.